Okay, so here we go. I'm starting again. I'm trying on a day that's not all wet and rainy and the woods not all wet and I had the kids go around and pick up a bunch of sticks. I thought I'd try it. And look, there's Layla. She has to go outside and play with fire. And so I thought I would try again. And I'm not sure what's happening. It looks like it might be going today. So I'm just trying to figure out this whole process. It looks like I've got a fire going without adding too much paper or cardboard or whatever I hadn't added the other night. Sticking sticks in. I had trouble adding too much wood, I think. And putting stuff out, smothering it. So I don't know what size is best, but we'll get this going. And also I stuck a piece of charcoal in the bottom of the can. Thinking if I got that to go, then it should go pretty good. Sounds pretty hot. Ooh, top that's getting hot. The wind's kind of blowing in. It keeps switching around, so... I don't know if having the opening towards the wind is better or not. Or if I should just let it go how it goes. But yeah, I might go get a can of water and try to boil it. It's easier to see too since it's not dark. See how that looks from down here. I got a lot of sticks in there. Maybe I should stop <laughs> sticking them in quite so fast. I think I might have some type of heat action going. The wind might be too strong. As you can see in there. I'm sure this is very entertaining. <laughs> it is kind of neat seeing how that works. Just burn the tips so you don't really want to stick it all the way through. Or do you? We'll figure that out when we figure if I can figure this out before an emergency. An emergency won't be as big a deal. already planning the next time. This time making this stove I just kind of use some oh, little snip thing. They're not even tin snips. More like wire cutters. And a really mangled -y job. And afterwards I realized I have a little Dremel type tool thing. I probably would have done a much better job. I wouldn't have cut my fingers up near as bad. That's interesting. The wind just kind of blew and it died out. So I'm not sure what just happened for reals. Look at that top. Like a light bulb or a flame popped up. So I'm not going to stick it in far enough. There's some wind. So I should probably test out the cookability on this thing. So I'll be right back with a pan of water. Okay. So here we go, I got a pot of water, I got some water pitcher, it's filled up to 1500, 
I don't know if it's cc, milliliters, I don't have a clue, it's 1500. And so, in this pot, I'm going to sit on there. I got a timer thingy app going. And so I will pour in the water and push the button and see what happens. See, here we are. 1500. 1500 water going. Press start. So, and the timer clock says 517. In the PM on the Sunday, um, October something. And here we go. Trying to figure out how to keep this fire going. And I think the key is use dry sticks. When you use wet sticks, then you're just trying to dry them out before you can burn them. And I'm not patient enough to do that, I guess. And so the trick is have dry sticks, and so I think I'll just keep a keep a thingy of this little tote. Maybe I'll keep some sticks in it to dry, to keep dry. And then when I'm in need, I'll have some. And I'll check back in in a little bit. Let's see. The other night I tried it, and the water started getting warm. Well, it wasn't cold cold from the tap anymore but we'll see what happens today and I know this pan's not the best for cooking on this this large bottom pan on this small bottom or small topped uh, cooker stove but it's the one that already had the burnt bottom action going on so I thought what the heck I don't know you can put dish soap on the bottom before you burn it and it comes cleaner. But who has that type of ambition? Okay, yeah, I know. I do. So, I'll look through there. I'll check back in. What do we have? We're going on two minutes. Two minutes so far. Let's test the water. Ooh, and that's actually getting hot. You can see it steaming off of there. You can see it better in the camera viewfinder than in real life, the steam. So two minutes and I've already got water that's somewhat to the hot to touch. That's pretty good. This might be a better how to watch boiled water video than the other one. I started making. So. Let's try not to overdo that. And so you can see the flames coming through. You can probably see it over there. Yeah. We're going on three minutes right now. Bless you. <laughs> Looks like the sticks are sneezing on me. So the only smoke I'm really seeing is popping out of the chamber, so I'm guessing some of the sticks are... Yeah, like this little one's burning down. I'm not getting them pushed in as quick as they burn. And so they burn in the little feed chute. And so... That's where you're getting the smoke because it's not burning efficiently as you would in the rocket chamber. So now as I push that you can see some smoke coming out, but a little smoke between friends never hurt no one. So we're just hitting the four minute mark. I used a few little bitty sticks. So in an emergency, I think you could probably find some sticks that would work. And you look in there and you can maybe see. I'm seeing some little bubbles starting to form at four and a half minutes. That's not too bad for 1,500 waters. <laughs>
units of measure are funny if you don't know what the measurements are. And this whole setup I made the cans out of just re recycled, can reused cans. Number 10 can that had rice on it at one point. And then a couple other, like four other cans mingled about. So I should have brought out the tripod. So yeah, that's hot. I'm pretty sure that does not mess up my experimental results. And you can see the flames just pouring out of there. Maybe you can't. I should look through the viewfinder. And so, I'm just kind of pouring out of there. So I guess there's a cross breeze coming from this side over here. Shooting out that side. That's where the smoke's going. But to me, it feels like the wind's blowing the other direction. So I don't know how life works. So we're at six minutes. So I'm not sure how fast the water is supposed to boil, but I guess if I make future rocket stoves, I'll use the same 1500 waters and the same pot to keep my results working the same. Just look at those flames go. I think the neighbor's having a party or went out in town left their stereo on, I don't know. It's not my brand of music. Just keep sticking some sticks in because I like to add sticks to a fire. So I guess if I had to, I could at least get some water hot. In an emergency, I could make some hot cocoa. <laughs> That's all you need to survive, right? Hot cocoa. Better get some hot cocoa to put in my hot water in. We're at seven and a half minutes, and there are definitely bubbles forming. So, De by definitely, I mean you can't see it, but I can. And it's steaming, or maybe smoke. Maybe it's smoke on the water. And these sticks. It's kind of amazing how much flame it's coming off of handful of sticks sitting in a uh, old, I think it's a soup can. A couple other soup cans, some peas. And it's 5.25 when we started, what, 5.17? I don't know. Long video, but maybe I'll trim it down, maybe I won't. Kind of fun standing here listening to me jabber on, isn't it? Any opposed? I didn't think so. I guess if I put this up on YouTube, you can let me know if you enjoy my jabbering on or not. I might even read it. Comments. Look at the things. Sometimes I do that. Oh, come on, flames. I smother you out. That's the other thing. I see a lot of videos people use. Two by fours all split up. Like, well, I don't really have two by fours to split up. We're at nine minutes now. Our bubbles are forming pretty good up there. See them. You might be able to see some right there. 
just getting harder. Nice some little bigger sticks, just because the bigger the better. I see something around here. What I did when I was putting this together, put some like sealant glue on there. And that gets a little ouch hotter. You can see it's kind of bubbling up. I just did that because the ashes were falling out and my wife probably would kill me if I got ashes all over the house. And so I just did that. And so there's probably some killer fumes coming off that. But you only live once, right? <laughs> See that? Should I do the hot water test at 10 minutes 35 seconds? Oh, that's hot. Ooh, I see bubbles coming up. So, I'm guessing the water from the middle gets the, the hot water in the middle gets the hot water on the side hot enough. I don't know how water works. And so that can's kind of hot. See on the outside. Oh, that's hot. So there is ashes in there to um, insulate it, but it's not really perfectly insulated. You'll want to let it cool down before you move it around after using. I just want to see a rolling boil on this. That's my whole purpose in life is to see a rolling boil on this thing. Push these little sticks in there. Kind of hard to do. Put that in there. And like I mentioned earlier, in the bottom there, I just put a piece of charcoal in. So I think I built it funny. And so the, um, the where is it? This can. This can goes inside to that can. It's up a little bit so there's more space in the bottom. I think there's a bunch of dead space so I put that there to take up some room. And there's charcoal. Charcoal burns right. We're at 12 minutes 15 seconds. So I'm just seeing what we're seeing. I see bubbles and they're coming up to the top. So I guess if I can get clean sterile water in 15 minutes I'll be happy. If I get hot waters in 10 minutes to make hot cocoa, I'll be happy. Kids will be happy. This is just an experiment. We probably won't make hot cocoa. We're worried about sterilized water. Since the water we had is already pretty clean from the tap. I'm guessing if I had a smaller pan on this, it would heat the water faster, maybe. That might be how that works. Here, let's look at these flames again. That's kind of soothing. I need more holes in there so I can watch it better. I could go, ooh, flames. Looking in there. It's like there's Screen savers of the fireplace at Christmas time. This one's not Christmas time. And it's really small, so I guess if you had a really small fireplace, that's what it would look like. So I'm push some sticks in there a little further. See that flame? And most of that, I'm pretty sure, is steam. That's what's really cool about this. It's, it's really efficiently burning the sticks. And so we don't have a lot of smoke. No, that smells like steam. So, we got that. A rolling boil. <laughs> yeah. And we're at 14 minutes 29 seconds right now. So, that's pretty good. 
I don't know if I can get it rolling below. Well. I can definitely try. I guess if I let this go long enough, the water will evaporate out and whatever's left will be boiling. Is that how that works? So I guess I can boil water on this. I guess it'd work with matchstick if it was long enough. I don't know. And boil water in a thimble. Nothing better than watching water boil. That's how that plane is coming good. So I think they put something green in there. I hear a little sizzle. I don't think I burned a hole in the bottom of the pan. Finger in the hot water test again. Yeah, yeah, that's hot. It's definitely hot. We are now going on 16 minutes of my commentary that will never be aired. Part 7. Yeah, let's put some more sticks in there. There's nothing cooler than putting sticks in a fire. And that's why we never had a fireplace growing up. Because I would have been putting sticks in it. So the water's getting hotter. Bubbles are coming up to the top. It's it's gonna boil on me. This is a technical description of boiling. So it just mean bubbles coming off or does it have to really roil and ripple the water? I don't remember from chemistry. I remember boiling stuff. Should put salt in the water. Would that be cheating? Let me test. I guess put my finger in there might be salt on there. 17 minutes now. I'm seeing little bubbles all over the pot, so I'm guessing this water is hot. It reminds me of on Jurassic Park the boom. Boom. Oh no, the Tyrannosaurus is going to get me. And if you don't get it, then you're too old or too young. Or you're not me. And here I see some of these sticks falling in to burn. Ah, push those that way. So I'm going to call this stove a success. And there's a few rules you want to follow when making a rocket stove. First, do not actually put a rocket inside of it. That would probably burn up, blow up, or hurt someone, or at least ruin a rocket. Perfectly good rocket. 18 minutes and 10 seconds coming on. And um, so, rule number one when you're burning it, use dry stuff. I guess rule number one was no rocket in there. Okay. Let's keep track of that. And rule number two, use dry stuff. Rule number three, be careful when you're making it. I had a couple of nicks and stuff, nothing too seriously, except for blisters from using those little wire cutters to cut out tin cans. That kind of hurts, so it's uncomfortable. Um, yep, those are the only three, four, I don't know how many rolls that was. And be careful, because you're using fire. Probably not use galvanized stuff, that's what I've seen. Galvanized will put up a dangerous fuel and you will die when you use it. And so when you're trying to do something to keep yourself alive in an emergency, you don't want to use something that will put off a poison and kill you. I'm guessing. I guess that's how I am. And we're in like 20 seconds after 19 minutes in our test and there's still steam coming. So I'm still putting sticks in, so. As long as I'm putting sticks in it, it keeps it burning. And most of the original sticks I put in have burned up. 
not like I've been paying attention. I just stick it in because it's fun. I could sit here all day. And I guess you can really definitely cook something on this plate. I'm having pancakes for dinner tonight and I thought I'd cook some pancakes on it, but I'm not that ambitious tonight. But this water is starting to boil. So we're at 20 minutes. And if you're still watching this and you haven't skipped it, left the room, then more power to you because I probably won't watch the whole thing. I might in case I sit and watch it through once just to make sure I don't say anything too stupid in the course of making this video. That would get people to laugh at me. But I say, go out and look, research rocket stoves and make one. That'd be fun. Probably have my 11 year old help me make the next one just so he can say he did. And there's a, he's got a camp out coming up in a few weeks. I think it's a few weeks, I don't remember. And, um, it'd be fun to take a rocket stove there and cook on it. A good thing to get scouts doing these things. And then there's probably some merit badge or requirements he can pass off by. Ooh, now I'm getting smoke. I must use something like green. But, um, yeah. Really big things. Oh boy, one. So we're at almost 22 minutes since they poured the 1500 waters into this pan. I bet the volume of water has changed to a little less than 1500 since I started. That's me. I think I could keep this heat up if I wanted to cook something for a while. And there's the alarm going off. It must be done. And all these sticks pushing in are getting too short, so they're just falling in there. Which is fine with me. I'm almost done. Uh, I need to go and make supper. That oh, it's probably getting annoyed at me been out here for 20 minutes. But she's stuck in there with the kids. Let's put some of that back in there. Go in there. Don't you like your home? And this video is going to be a companion to my blog post of making this thing. So you can see how it works and I had a thermometer with me, I would take the temperature, and I'm guessing the temperature is over 200 degrees in there, and 212 is boiling hot. I'm going to guess it's 211 degrees. Hovering at that spot. I guess I can go grab the thermometer. Uh, I might as well go do that. I'll be back. Here I am back. I have this large style thermometer. And I'll put that in there in such a manner that you won't be able to read it, but I can. So I can make up the results. And I'm trying not to touch the bottom of the pan. So if we look at that, and I don't know if we can... It's kind of... I don't know if the lens of the camera is... Let's look at this. That was my shirt. Looks even more smeared. This says it's only a, like 180 degrees. I'm guessing that I have stopped putting sticks in for a couple minutes when I went to look for the thermometer. So if I stick some more sticks in there, then I can look. <laughs> that is probably a good shot of the ground over there. Somewhere else. Stick some more stuff in there. Get the display in the back up. 
we'll see that our temperature is well over one million degrees. Um, something. That thing just fell. Tried killing me. I'm telling my mom. Since she'll be the only one that 25 and a half minutes. She'll be the only one watching this. Fahrenheit one says 100 Celsius. It's a small number on the inside. As we can see, the flames are coming. I'm guessing this is accurate. It says it's dishwasher safe. In case you need to take the temperature of your dishwasher. Have you ever had to take the temperature of your dishwasher? I guess maybe if you were running a bed and breakfast, there might be some regulation where you have to take the temperature of a dishwasher. Make sure you get the dishes sterilized before you feed people you do not know personally, rather than those you know um, professionally. So we're coming up. I guess I should definitely zoom in on that before I start taking it. We're at just going on 27 minutes of the fire that ate Detroit. Stick your finger too far in that hole. It gets hot. Unless you like hot fingers. I like chicken fingers hot. We all know chickens are hot. Okay. It's about 200 degrees. And I think I may just pull this off because I'm that type of person. Just burn for burning sake. And so we can all agree to disagree or not. We will see you. Sometime. Ciao, Bella. <laughs>